Welcome to a new OpenFoam application training video. Today I want to talk about CheckMesh and an extension I made. Actually, um, this uh, video was inspired by Joseph Nagy because he also made like a CheckMesh video. So please don't misunderstand this, that this is like a copy paste of things. No, actually, um, I want to uh, talk about the extension I made. And the extension is probably, or let's say, for the people who are using the foundation version, all OpenFOAM users who are using the AC version, this is already implemented. However, as I never checked it, I have no idea how it works in the AC version. So that's why I will talk about my extension here. And of course, I want to go to to give you the idea of CheckMesh and to talk about uh, a few parameters. So actually, what, what is CheckMesh? CheckMesh is an application, a pre-processing application. Uh, after you are yeah, converting your mesh from Salome or ANSYS or whatever into a foam mesh or if you are generating your mesh using CF mesh, snappy hex mesh or whatever, you always should check your mesh before you are running your simulation. For a demonstration, I'm going to the tutorial section of OpenFoam. We are going to the mesh, uh, to the snappy hex mesh and to the flange tutorial. I will just clean everything and we are ending up with this stuff. We just run the run script, which will generate the background mesh for the snappy hex mesh, extrude some feature edges and then meshing everything with uh, snappy hex mesh. So how does this look like? So the generated mesh is actually this one. What we are talking about in the next few minutes. So this is our mesh and snappy hex mesh did a good job as we could see here. However, sometimes if we have like more volume cells, it can happen that some cells are really, I don't want to use this word, but they're really crapified and they will destroy your numerical analysis. Um, therefore, I will show you what CheckMesh uh, can do for you and what you can do with the extension I made. Okay, so if you have an open foam case and you have a mesh included, so a poly mesh in constant poly mesh, so if this constant poly mesh is there, you have a mesh and you can use CheckMesh to check your mesh. Actually, CheckMesh gives you a bunch of information of your mesh statistics, the topology and some geometry things. And if you are executing CheckMesh, you first get where the mesh is read from. So here from time zero, actually, this is uh, commonly the constant folder. If you have a moving mesh and you have different time folders, it will check all time folders. And um, the application will give us some mesh statistics. So how many points, phases and cells we have. Actually, actually these internal phases and phases are different as if you are subtracting phases minus internal phases, the resulting is the boundary phases. We see how many cells we have, how many phases per cell we have uh, in average how many boundaries, so just read through it. Then an interesting thing is that we get like a number of cell types, uh, which is like uh, included in our numerical mesh. So as you can see, we have 15,550 hexahedrals. We have some prisms, we have some TED wedges, and we have polyhedrals. And these polyhedrals are also split into how many phases do these polyhedrals have? If you need like a description, what is a wedge, what is a prism, what is a TED wedge, please check out the Open Foam user guide because there is one page which tells you the definition of these shapes. 
If you're going further, we have some topology checks. Also some topology checks uh, for our patches. Here we have the patch names, how many faces we do have, how many points we do have uh, for this uh, patch, and if the surface topology is okay. And then at the end we get the geometry checks, which is for me uh, one of the most important things. For example, the bounding box is a very interesting thing and you should always check it out. So if you just imagine that our mesh is about 10 meters in size or our geometry to be mesh is in 10 meters of size, uh, you can directly see that you will have a scaling problem as we do have, for example, if you are checking the X direction, we have 2.5 centimeters minus X direction and 2.5 and the positive x direction so we have like five centimeters so if our geometry would be 10 meters or let's say five meters we would have a scaling problem and a scaling problem leads to um, let's say if you have the correct boundary conditions for your problem but your problem is let's say 10 or 100,000 times smaller or bigger of course it will influence your complete numerical simulations just imagine you have 10 kilograms per second flowing through a 2 meter um, pipe or the 2 meters out of diameter or if you are pushing this 10 k, 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 k chase per second into a uh, uh, pipe which has only 1 millimeter of uh, cross section or diameter so this will actually definitely influence the results. So check always the bounding box. Then we have like uh, geometric uh, information about how many uh, dimensions our mesh do have. Of course, it's always a volumetric mesh. So we have always X, Y, and Z as we have volumes. But if you are using empty or wedges, we can reduce our solution domain to 2 or 1D. And we'll see it here. Probably if you're making wedges and you will um, extrude one patch to be a wedge and you should have like five degree and you will get some errors here. Just change um, the setting in the system control dict from the safe in ASCII to binary. This will probably solve your, your problems here. And we get like boundary openness, maximum cell openness, and uh, aspect ratio, right? Down we also have the skewness. And these three parameters are one of the most I'm always looking at. It's like the minimum face area and the minimum volume and the non-orthogonality. Let's jump to the first two. The minimum face area and the minimum volume should be always positive as it is and not physical that we have a negative area or a negative volume. I even don't know how a negative cell looks like with the volume. I think somehow the surface normals are wrong oriented. The, the faces are going inside or somehow are very crazy. Uh, the cells should be uh, have very crazy cells. However, uh, with the extension I made, you can analyze this volumes and also these faces. At the end, one of the most important things is the uh, non-orthogonality and we will get the information about the maximum average. The non-orthogonality is especially important for the Laplacian term and the surface normal grading calculation. As if we do have non-orthogonality, we have to have like an explicit term added to the Laplacian or to the surface normal gradient calculation in order to make a correction. This term is however explicit, which is not nice to have, but we have to have it. Furthermore, a correction should be, yeah, if, if, if you're using a block mesh, yeah, where every phase and everything is aligned with the coordinate axis, you should not have any non-orthogonality so you can go to your FV schemes in system and change the Laplace and surface normal gradient schemes to be orthogonal. However, if you do have non-orthogonality, you should always add the correction term. Also here, 
in the user guide there is a very well described section about non-orthogonality and how to use the numerical schemes there. Okay, one thing here you will get like a face permit check which is also okay. And at the end you get like an information that the mesh is okay for your numerical analysis. However, check mesh can be executed with a lot of attributes. For example, the all geometry or all topology um, attribute. If we do so, topology, we will get more checks as we can already see here. We get here, the first things are uh, still identical like the mesh states but then here in the topology checks we get like two things more and here in the geometry we get further analysis of our numerical mesh for example concaveness and the cell determinant and other things flatness and so on as you can see if we have like an error we get like uh, the stars in front, so one and two star messages are not very critical, but three star messages actually are critical. The thing that we get like here is three star message with the all geometry checks, and while we don't get it with the check meshes, only related to the fact that if we are using all geometries, uh, the concaveness is also added. However, check mesh is a very old tool, so this concaveness is not really a, a, a very critical thing already, or up to in the newer open foam times. Um, therefore, you can check them, but the most important are the, the phase and volume data as well as the non orthogonality. So, if you are using the open foam foundation version i implemented something new for example non-orthogonality the volume phase area to visualize them on our 3d geometry one word if you are interested in this kind of things you go to my website you go to online material developments and here check mesh extension at the bottom, you can download it. And here's a description what you have to do. And in order to use that, you have to yeah, ex extract the, the, the files. So you have to untar it from my website and push it to the right direction. And then you have to recompile check mesh. But it's everything is written there. If, if you have any problems, just um, write me in a message or something like this. If you do so, you get a new attribute which is called write mesh fields. And then if you do that, you will get like an, an, another output or more output which will tell you that a new field is written which is uh, the cell volumes and also a field is written which has contains the cell types. and if you are checking this in Paraview, we will do that. You will see that uh, the value 0 is hexahedral, the value 1 is tetrahedral. However, if you get a, a value of 6, it's a tet wedge. Also, we are writing out different cell fields, some non-orthogonality and cell skewness and spec ratio, as well as phase non-orthogonality, phase skewness and phase areas. These fields are written to the time folder here, 0. So you can see we have the spec, uh, cell spec ratio, all these fields are written. The interesting point here is that I am I'm using, uh, for example, for cell data, I am using the internal field, the volume scalar field internal, which uh, reduces the boundaries. So we don't have boundaries here, um, which is more conservative to handling these fields. Also the faces, so any face I'm writing out is a surface scalar field. 
and here actually I do handle the boundaries as the boundaries are faces too. In order to check them out, you have to use Parafoam. Parafoam will let you allow to visualize the cell types here. So if you do that, you can easily check what are my cell volumes here. And of course, the cell volumes are always interesting and vice versa. So the smallest cells, the smallest cells are of main interest because if you are calculating the current number, you will get uh, the smallest cells, which are the one who will reduce your time step. So here, this red one are the smallest cells. Actually, you can imagine now, oh, they look bigger than this one. But if you extract these cells, it's, it's really clear that these cells are really small or smaller compared to the to the other cells. I should also unselect the decompose if it's possible here. Doesn't matter. Let's just extract them. So now you, you can definitely see that this cell, this red one is, is much smaller in volume shape than the neighboring cells here. That's why it's, it's, it's colored red. You also can check out the cell types. And here, as, as you get like the output, these integers correspond to these types of cells. So if we have six, which is red, it's a, actually a TED wedge. Blue is zero, they are pure hexahedrals. And you can also reduce like this, the color. And then you, you get a better understanding here about that. Um, there's also another option. I'm not sure if this is all correct. So if you are making a spreadsheet view and you use the cell data, you also get like the cell type from ParaView, which is a hexahedron, which corresponds to the cell types I calculated in my extension. So here we have like a wedge, which is four. Let's just check if four, four is actually a pyramid and not a wedge. So here things are more or less a bit different but these cell types are corresponding to the open foam definitions. So two is actually a polyhedral. So far, so good. You can also check the cell skewness and of course the cell non-orthogonality, which is probably one of the most important things you are interested in. However, the the non-orthogonality is more or less interesting for the faces, not for the cells. Therefore, it's much better to analyze the, the face non-orthogonality. However, if I will just apply this, the problem is that we cannot that we cannot see this field because it's a surface scalar field, right? So the only thing you can do to visualize and make an analysis of your face non-orthogonality as well as face areas or face skewness, you have to transform them using foam to VTK. Either you, you just execute it as it is, then you get like the information that we have like volume scalar fields internal. These are the, yeah, the, the fields I implemented into the extension of CheckMesh. We have a few, one actually one volume scalar field and we have one point scalar field. And then it is converting it into the flange 0.vtk. Also these patches are, the data for the patches are converted. And then 
you see that surface scalar fields we have one two three which are also converted and they are written into this new vtk field but for um, one hint for the surface scalar fields you have to add surface surface fields in order that it is written out now we have these surface fields these surface fields if you are looking inside yeah you actually you cannot see anything but it's points it's a point field and now you can use para view or para foam it doesn't matter and you open this VTK file. So first of all, we are use we are opening this flange zero, which takes the internal field, and we have also here the possibilities to check out the cell ratio, the cell monorthogonalities, skewness, and cell types. So actually, it's identically to what we had before in Parafoam. But now I want to show you how you can analyze the surface fields. So we open the surface fields and we do have here face areas, face non-orthogonality or face skewness. Let's just be at the face areas. As you can see, you can see nothing. This is related to the fact that these surface scalar fields are transformed into point fields. So you should have the point Gaussian filter activated, which will give you, yeah, actually the, the points these are the cell center points and they are colored with the with the face area value in square meter i will just change let me see here so we have 3.4 to powers minus 8 square meters and also here the less the worse so we we just change it and we can cut through it and can make an analysis of our is it possible i think it should be possible it's not possible i was thinking it is possible somehow and um, yeah maybe there is some option but here you can see how you can analyze your fields um, another good thing is you use the surface i think now it's possible to to work out you go and apply this glue filter you say sphere and then your field is displayed as spheres you just reduce the radius that it gets a bit it was too much maybe probably also too much the scaling we don't scale it we, we use more points so let's do it to, to three and i think now we can cut through it yes exactly and so you can make an analysis of your face areas as well of the non orthogonality or the face skewness however this is a bit hard to to get like the visualization um, but if you are using this technique you are probably be able to get the problematic areas in your mesh however we can also load now this internal field and we also cut through it and we will use here this phase non-orthogonality first of all i will show you that these points are at the face centers as you can see here we still need more points i hope my computer is working out and 
these points are on the phase centers. Doesn't matter if it's on the boundary or in the, at the internal field, but this is how it looks like. So using like the, the mesh here, you will be able to make a better analysis. And while analyzing the cell non-orthogonality, we will get a very good agreement to the phase non-orthogonality, as you can see here. Nevertheless, the phase non-orthogonality is much better in, uh, in analyzing the non-orthogonality value in terms of quantity. But if you are making an analysis of the quality, the, the cell centers or the cell value should be uh, fine enough. So far, so good. This is, uh, or this was the application training video about check mesh. I hope you guys got some new information and ideas how you are visualizing uh, your mesh quality parameters with the extension. If you are using the AC version, just check out the video from Joseph. I think there is a similar extension um, uh, given to uh, check mesh. I have no idea how it is named here, but uh, this is my implementation while I also have written out the cell types and its definitions. So I hope this extension contribution to the open foam community will help you to get better meshes, to make a better analysis of your mesh and to improve your mesh at the locations and areas where your mesh is not good. Probably some future plans. I hope that I am able to implement uh, this extension to the foundation dev line. However, maybe as you know, there are things are sometimes a bit tricky as I had to change like a few classes for check mesh, um, which uh, will be non, not really conform uh, with, with everything uh, actually. It doesn't matter, I want to talk about that now, but maybe in future you can find this extension already in the dev line of the foundation open foam version. In that sense, I wish you everything, all the best, keep foaming and stay healthy. Bye.